Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development episode. Today is November 23rd and I'm picking up right where I left off in the last episode. We are writing a test to assert that a dialog was displayed and then set visible. Um, this has been a real pain in the butt. I've spent way more episodes on it than I wanted to, but we've been making steady forward progress, so that's good. Um, and when we left off last time, we had a test that should have worked, but didn't. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, um, looks like I've just got some old test code left over. So let's get rid of that and see if this works. It passes, and let's see if it fails properly. Yeah, perfect. So we are successfully testing whether or not the dialog has been created. I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring here. This code is really nasty. Um, and I'm not saying that this is making it better, but it's slightly better. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing again, only rather than looking at whether or not the dialog's been created, we need to make it visible. And to test that, it's just a matter of saying, well, now that we have our uh, our window we can say frame dot get owned windows and get the last one so that's our windows Okay, and we're going to want to wait until that appears. So past equals dialog dot is visible. These have already been declared. So this should fail. Because I'm not setting it visible yet. Yep, and now There. Okay, so we've got the test completely figured out at this point, I think. Um, the code is ugly, and the main reason it's ugly is this really awkward asynchronous assertion. So what I want to do is factor out that asynchronous assertion into its own method. And I think what I'll do is I'll call that um, uh, assert asynchronous true. <laughs> um, assert eventually true. And what do I want to assert? I want to assert the dialog uh, should be created. And I want to check it every 10 milliseconds and I want a timeout of a thousand milliseconds. And the actual test will be a runnable. Um, this is basically a poor man's code block. Uh, something you can do in really easily in Ruby and, Java, and JavaScript is pass in an actual code block. You can't do that in Java. It doesn't have good syntax and it doesn't have proper closures, but you can fake it with these anonymous inner uh, classes. But they're, it's, it's so clunky in comparison to more modern languages. Um, but it will work. And it's a great way of, of factoring out something like this. 
used to be that the, the approved approach was to create, it was used a template method pattern, I believe, which involved creating a superclass. That's, that's really clunky. I don't want to do that. So, um, oh, but you know what? I don't know. No, runnable, I need something that's going to, great. Well, let's see. So, So we'll call that an asynchronous check at like uh, call it an asynchronous assertion, and that's going to be a interface asynchronous assertion And it's going to have a single method in it called assert. It's going to re uh, called check assertion. That's going to return a boolean that returns true. If uh, if the assertion succeeds, I don't know if what I'm planning to do here is coming across, but hopefully it will make sense eventually. Um, again, Java makes this way harder than it ought to. And here we're going to check the number of windows and then return the number of windows. Okay, well, hopefully that makes sense. This is kind of a funky little extract method refactoring I'm doing. It's um, doubt it's in Martin Fowler's book, but call it extract template <laughs> uh, or code block method. I don't know closure method. We don't have closures, but close enough. Anyway, now what we need to do is we need to have a little private method down here that will do what we're doing here assert eventually true. And that's going to take a message is going to take uh, that's going to be a string. It's going to take a check frequency it's going to take a timeout and it's going to take uh, a check. And that class asynchronous assertion is going to have to come out. There we go. Assert eventually true. There. Um, so, and then the actual code here is going to be the same as this. I start out with a start time. Um, While not check dot cert true, we're going to sleep.
that should just fail. Um, sleep interrupted. That should never happen. And let's just to make life a little simpler, make the code read better. We'll put that on the outside. Um, or assert that is true. We'll sleep for the check frequency. And if the elapsed time is greater than the timeout, we'll fail um, with message within timeout milliseconds. There. Well, <laughs> um, that was kind of the ugliest refactoring I've ever done. Well, no, actually, truth, truth advertising, I've done much worse. Um, but I think that's going to work. So let's go ahead and comment out the code that makes this work. We should see it fail. We should see it say, dialogue should be created within 1,000 milliseconds. Yep. Um, and then take that back out. And it passes. Great. That's awesome. Okay, so now we can do the same thing. We can say, we're going to assert that it's eventually true that the dialog um, should be visible. And that, again, we want to do in the same amount of time. And we'll create a new asynchronous assertion. Um, and we'll assert true. And what are we going to assert true on? That... these things are all true. We're going to get the windows. We're going to get the last most dialog. And then we'll assert that it's visible. And in fact, rather than doing that over and over again, I think we can just do it here. And we're not making the window visible yet, so that should fail with dialogue should be visible within a thousand milliseconds, and it's not. And then yes, perfect, great, really happy with this code. Um, and it's kind of I'm really glad I've had a chance to show you how you can do some uh, testing of multi-threaded code as well. I uh, wasn't expecting to have that come up, but it has, and that's pretty cool. So let's just double check this code, make sure it reads clearly. Um, saying, get the initial number of windows. Um, expect that to be zero, typically. And actually, let's go ahead and assert that. Um, initial number of windows assumed be zero. Uh, I'm putting this assumption in here just to, you know, I want this to break if that assumption doesn't turn out to be true. I want to come back and take a, a second look at this. Um, and in fact, here we don't want to just say any number of windows. We really want it to be just one more window. So let's just return that that equals one. Uh, it's, you know, the, the less smart you have to make your tests, the easier they are to read. Yeah. Um, so this runs asynchronously, then that goes, then we get the windows, and we should really be able to say, because we're asserting there's just one, we should be able to assert that this is just that zero, 
and that we can inline. Yeah. And let's call this the uh, save as dialog to make ourselves screechingly obvious, as Alistair Coburn would say. And we're going to assert that the save dialog, save as dialog, dialog should be visible. Um, and we're asserting that it is visible. Yeah. Um, I think that reads pretty well. Let's make sure this all still works. Take a second look at our search eventually true. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Just a little comment here saying uh, code that reaches this point passed its test. or we pass the test, then we reach this point. Okay, well that's all the time we have for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Next time we'll turn this into production code. Thanks again. I will see you next time.